My name is Paul Stauer. I have a charcoal production in Serbia, and I'm focusing a little bit on um, on uh, animal food additive. And there is also people now coming uh, towards anaerobic digestion, uh, digestrus, which um, is seems to be also helping biochar. But uh, I just want to give you a little bit of my experience, what, what we experienced in Serbia so far, and um, start with the word biochar. You know, uh, this is, I like the term biochar, but what is it, what is it in, in fact? It's a little bit difficult to describe. You heard that now from everywhere, and more and more people are getting aware that it is not, uh, biochar is not just one thing. And one of my clients actually wants me to cut the wood on a certain way so the pores stay intact. So that is uh, also the clients sometimes get aware that there is uh, that there is uh, not always the wet, the same uh, charcoal coming out mm -hmm. of the same raw material even. So. Um, what can biochar do and what can it not do? It's not really my approach. My approach is rather what do you do when you apply the biochar into an animal? And um, this is a very complex system and there is not always one outcome. You know, uh, you have, you give the biochar for toxin observation, for example. So um, what kind of toxins do you absorb? I have no idea. And uh, what pH is sort of on the pH is depending on the pH. Uh, it can have a different effect uh, on the on the toxins you absorb. And most important, I think, it's when you give the biochar to to an animal to eat, you're influencing a biological system, microbiological system, and um, this can actually change the whole biology in an animal or in an anaerobic digester. This client which I'm talking to, when he introduces biochar in his anaerob anaerobic digester, he actually removes the performance first. And only like after 10 or 20 days, it comes back. But then it's more stable. Instead, it has less fluctuation and it has most of the time a better performance, always uh, when there is a problem, he has a better result in the end than when he introduces it to a, to a, um, to a perfectly working system. And this is what Hans Peter Schmidt said, you know, the nature didn't wait us uh, for biochar to be introduced in the system. It only maybe helps where there is a problem. So I, my approach also is, when I approach clients, it's more, uh, I'm looking where there is a problem and it's not so much where there is already everything working perfect. You maybe really mess up something when you put the biochar in a, in a system that is working perfect, perfectly. Because biochar also has an antibiotic effect on bacteria itself. And um, uh, it's not always just good to give biochar just like that. That's what I think. And then it's also a question of the dosage, how much uh, you can have a result here with the same, also uh, with 0.1% or, or 1% or 0.5%. This can be the same effect, it cannot be the same effect. It is too complex for me to, uh, to, to say that most biochar is just like working, working like that. And uh, so my approach normally is, um, find a client, give him to try it out, and if it works, he should stay with that kind of biochar. And <coughs> he can also try another biochar, but he probably has another effect. But my approach is always try it out and, um, and see if it works, and if you have good results, stay with it. And um, we have that uh, in Serbia, we had results with 10% more fodder efficiency in a piglet farming, also same amount of food, um, 0.5 to 1% um, biochar in it, and 10% faster growth. And the neighbor tried it out and he didn't have it. So <coughs> I don't know why, it's more or less the same pigs, more or less <coughs> the same conditions, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And the neighbor says, it's a stupid thing, I don't like it. <laughs> actually, actually, um, 
the neighbor, the, the pig started eating more. And um, for him, because the biochar, he has to put uh, a little bit of money into the biochar. So for him, it's more spending on the food because the pigs ate more and they ate more biochar. <laughs> but for me, actually, on the other hand, it is that the, bio, that the pigs were less stressed. They were um, feeling better. They, can, they can, could go easier to the, to the, to the food to talk, how do you say that, to the fathering uh, yeah. jar, yeah? And they were more But in Serbia, unfortunately, um, animal health, animal well-being is not so much uh, important. In Germany, I guess, in Switzerland, I guess, you get a little bit more value to things like that. Um, those pigs, one, those pigs that um, were eating more, were they growing faster? Was they were growing to more, too, so he didn't but with the same photoconversion rate. So the farmer, when he sells one kilo of pig, uh, he will get the same amount, but he spent more money on the fodder, on the, on the, on the, you know, he, he spent more money on the fodder in the end, because it was more expensive charcoal. But if the pigs grow faster, then they are sold earlier, they're not fed as long, time-wise, so they would that analyzed at all? Also, the... The first farmer, which I was talking, he had 10% more uh, pig with the same amount of food. Over what time? Mm -hmm. Four months. The same amount of time? Huh? In the same amount of time? Yes. Four months? Uh, what yeah. Do you mean? So yeah, 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 yeah. This group, this group, they didn't, uh, they, they were 120 kilo and this group were 135 kilo. Okay. And they had the same amount of food, same amount of time, same amount of everything, same food. And the other farmer, um, he, they, they, the, the, the control group um, had uh, a certain amount of food, I don't know exactly how many kilos, and the other group with the charcoal ate more and grew more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They grew less, uh, but they ate more. <laughs> You know what I mean? Also, they grew a little bit more, and they um, they grew slower. But in the end, the expenses on the food was too much than uh, than the money that he got back. You know what I mean? Understand? How much did he pay for charcoal? Huh? How much did he pay for the bike? Um, around one thousand euros. Uh, the ton. Also, with the first farmer, it works out. He has like three euros more food costs per per animal over time, and he had like seven, ten euros uh, more for the meat he sold. So he had a gain of seven euros per pig. And with the second farmer, he just had more spend, expense, uh, expenses on the on the. Do you have any explanation? I say it's less stress. Because what I wanted to say next is that what we generally observe is less stress. Uh, the, all the animals that we were treated so far, they felt less stressy, they did have less ear and tail biting. We were reducing this within two days, this ear and uh, tail biting. So in general, I think it is a benefit for the animal. But as I told you, it's not always working the same. It depends what you feed with, with your animals, and there is a much too much complex system uh, to, to give a general idea. You put biochar in the system, and you get this result. With, was the sample size big enough to see decrease in morbidity from the tail bites and ear bites? Death rates? Death rates, we didn't um, have much difference of the death rate. Um, we had in this first experiment, which went very well, we had uh, less amount of fat compared to, to meat. Also we had more meat in the, in, the, in the meat. And subjectively, people say it tastes better. Subjectively. But uh, it's also a question also for, we have no funding at all, we have to do <laughs> the way we do it. Um, what I ask, also, I mean, the question is now, does it need more research or not? I think research never, um, is never wrong, 
but research is actually helping me not a lot because also as long as there is not more criteria how to characterize the biochar. I like this recent study I just got from a few days ago from the IBI that the methane reduction in the cow, also the, the, the reduction of the, the, the methane, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, does that help with my bar charcoal too or not? I don't know, because I don't know what kind of charcoal was used or what system or what was co-fed or whatever. So more research is for sure is good, but I don't know. Um, it should be, it's, there should be more uh, ca characterizing of the biochar, not only the IBI or the, 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 the uh, EBC, which says toxin free, but maybe like uh, electrical conductivity, also raw material first of all, uh, burning temperature first of all, um, then electrical conductivity for <coughs> example, and uh, pore size is expensive, but something um, specific area should not only be in uh, square meter per gram, but also square meter per cubic meter, or per cub cubic centimeters, because uh, uh, um, softwood charcoal has like half the specific size as a uh, hardwood charcoal. So maybe it's the surface area that does it, the surface, how much surface you have to give a cow to eat, you know, and not how much grams. I have no idea. But these kind of things should much be much more be um, characterized before you do a study. And there is people like Mr. Soya or uh, Gamon who, who should give these inputs what, what could be interesting to, to put as characterizing into the, into the charcoal. Um, yes, this is about it. Um, one little anecdote I can give you. I, had, I was in Vietnam recently and there was a found so, um, uh, a boy who had a kidney problem and he was actually afraid, his doctor told him he will not live much longer. He has uh, 1,000, over 1,000 milligram urine per deciliter, uh, milligram proteins um, per deciliter in his urine, and this is a very bad value, and they told him eat some biochar, and he started eating biochar, and he has no uh, proteins in his urine anymore. So <laughs> I have no idea why, but it worked. <laughs> When you mentioned um, that, that subjectively people were saying that the meat tasted better, you mentioned earlier that they were less stressed, and we know that less stressed animals, mm -hmm. uh, the, the meat does taste better. It's, um, it's bet better. Probably, yes, and there is even research in, um, in Germany going on. There is this called Ebergeruch, you know what this is? This is when you don't castrate your, your male uh, animals, then you get sometimes, you get a bad taste in the, in, the, in the meat, which not everybody detects, it's depending. And they actually do research on that, where the biochar can take out this Ebergeruch, and then if it does, then I will ask the next question, which biochar did you use? And they will say, well, the black one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, how, how did the farmers um, distribute the biochar to the pigs so they got a set dose? Um, was it at the feeding? When they feed it or what? Yeah, how, how did you guarantee how much each pig had? Oh, poof. well, what we have normally is like we have um, some silos where the food is inside and then they put, uh, they put it in a mixer and there they mix the different foods together and then they put on one on the kilo, they put um, one kilo of uh, charcoal inside and then they distribute it to the feed, to the pigs. But I mean, they have to, at least they have the group which eats here and the group that eats there. So um, that means Maybe this one ate more and this one ate less, but it's not the same group that they mix it up. But it's how it works on this farm. This is individual to, to every other farm. And you don't have any regulations from the government to use this kind of stuff for animals? That we have to use biochar? Or it's that we don't have? It's permitted huh? in, in your car. 
if we have a regulation? No, no, I would like to know if there is no regulation, it's permitted. Uh, it is per permitted of the European law to feed charcoal to animals. This is of the European law, it is allowed, you have to fulfill all the toxin uh, regulation, but it is allowed to give charcoal to your animals in the European law. It must be on the list, on the positive list. Your country is <coughs> We're not in the European community, but uh, they are still hoping that they will get there someday. So they are applying the law already. What country? Serbia. Serbia. So which livestock are you supplying, I mean, your customers, what livestock are they um, I have one client that does uh, um, fodder with chicken and cows, and probably uh, for Greece I will have one client for chicken and cows, and in Serbia we have mainly pigs. We have same amount of pigs as people, uh, six million, like something like that. <laughs> Sometimes difficult to distinct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Paul.